Hey guys, Doug the Michigan Piper coming to you from the Pipe Press again. And uh, once again smoking dandelion tea. Once again smoking my Dr. Graybo Savoy. And guys, this is this is almost identical to my Medico Bent, and I love both of them. Just to, I mean, if 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 I had to say this pipe, you know, a pipe is me, it would be this this pipe. Just uh, I like the military bits, but man, these just they fit. I don't know. They're really nice. Anyway, but not once again. What I am smoking is I left it over there. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Walnut Maple Pie by Indulge, I guess, or Cobblestone, one of the two. Um, this is a this is a very interesting blend, you guys. Cobblestone Indulge Walnut Maple Pie. It says rich walnut, sweet maple syrup combined with Burley Virginia Black Cavendish base for an extraordinary mixture. Um, so when I pulled this out, it was really, really wet. Uh, not, I can't say that. it was. It was. It was pretty moist, but it wasn't wet. Um, so I left it lay out to uh, to to dry. And my little room here is more of a closet. Um, it's eleven foot by seven foot. And uh, it in about five minutes filled the room with uh, with the fragrance, which is just absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, it's, it's called walnut maple pie, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't smell like walnut maple pie. It smells like walnut maple. It smells to me like somebody roasted walnuts and then poured maple, you know, or roasted them with maple syrup, maple on them. I don't know. But either way, it's just a really, I want to say it's a really sweet smell, but not in a sickening way. Not in a, you know, wow, that's, that's too much sugar. Um. Just almost that roasted almond or roasted uh, walnut type of uh, type of smell. So then I put it in the pipe, and uh, you know, right off the bat, I didn't see n nothing that really you know sent me to the moon or anything. The the room note on the on the on the tobacco is is just as good as the room note or the tin note. This is very, very nice. Um, do I think this is, you know, and you guys, if, you watch, if you've been watching my videos, you know, I'm pretty much comparing everything to either Carter Hall or to Distinguished Gentleman. Um, is a Distinguished Gentleman good to me? No. Um, but it's close. It's, uh, would I put this in my rotation? I could see this being a rotation. You know, as with most tobaccos, you don't get you don't get the real sugary or, or you know what's in the tin note and in the room note don't directly relate to uh, to what it tastes like, but it's still a good blend. Very good. And after smoking Old Dark Fired yesterday. It's like opposite end of the spectrum. So you guys, Mick and Ethan and all you other guys that that smoke old, old dark fired man, you guys are more of a man than me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'll, I'll take a chip off the side of my man card for that one because I can tell you last night. I had ice cream after I smoked that with caramel and then I had a glass of wine actually the other way around I had a glass of wine and ice cream I was being too good to myself yesterday like literally not shouldn't have had all that but I when I was done with all that my mouth tasted like I ate somebody's half smoked cigar no kidding um, Listerine to save the day boys and girls So all you guys out there has got the leather tongues. You know, in fire service, they used to call us leather lungs. We can start calling you guys leather tongues. Uh, 
That was interesting. An interesting experience. But no, this is good, guys. You know, a lot of these blends so far have just been, eh, it's okay. I don't know if I'll put it in my rotation or whatever. Um, but uh, this one, this one I like and I will come back to again, that's for sure. On another note, I had one of my firefighters walk in, and, and for those of you who don't know, I am full-time as a fire chief. My, my firefighters are, are uh, what they call on-call. It's like the old volunteers, but they do get paid while they're, while they're fighting fire, but they have a regular job. And uh, it's kind of funny because he came in. He told me about this accident that just happened to be in my other coverage area, the one I just left. So it was about 45 minutes north of us. Uh, and the gal went off the road and hit a bunch of trees on the highway. She hit these trees like at 70 mile an hour. And uh, he stopped. And when he called 911, they're like, yeah, they got a bunch of other calls on it. Well, nobody else stopped. He was the only one that stopped. And a car smoking. And he pulls her out. Um, as he pulls her out, the car catches fire. It's like something out of the movies. The car catches fire and it burns up. Uh, one of my guys that used to work for me up there called me today and told me that um, she for sure would have died. Uh, so, uh, but um, having said that, I mean, you know, I'm kind of on cloud nine because it's one of one of my guys, you know, and he's on cloud nine because you know it was he could be used. That's that's how most of us are. We just want to be used, you know, in a good way. Um, but. It brought up a, a subject to me that I wanted to bring up, which is accident scenes. Because we see a lot of Hollywood drama on the accident scenes that don't necessarily co correspond with real life. Surprise, surprise. And um, I just wanted to put out there, not that, you know, thousands upon thousands of people are listening to my channel, but for those of you that are... Um, it's not always necessary to yank somebody out of a car. Cars don't blow up. Um, I don't, you know, I've been in the fire service 25 years. I've never seen a car blow up. I've seen them burn up and, and stuff pop in them. Um, but nothing that actually, you know, big fireballs like you see on TV. Uh, usually what you see is uh, the dust. They call it smoke with the dust from the airbag because the airbags have like a talcum powder type dust on them because they come out so fast, 200 miles an hour plus, that they need that talc on there to, to keep the friction down uh, so it doesn't rupture itself as it's, expo as it's expanding. Um, now, in his case that happened yesterday, yeah, he absolutely needed to pull her out. The problem, what we see a lot of times is people get in accidents and other people think they're helping and they'll come in there yank them out real quick. Well, what you can do is you can actually aggravate their injuries. Um, you know, somebody think about it. Somebody's got a dislocated shoulder and you start yanking on them. You know, so make sure that, you know, if you are going to pull them out, uh, you know, people get excited and try to pull people out, out without a seatbelt or without undoing a seatbelt. So make sure your seatbelt's off. Make sure you're actually seeing fire. Now, one of the things you can do uh, if that person, you know, you think you might have to get the person out, but it's, you know, the car is stable, then go ahead and, and clear the way. In other words, make sure a door opens or, you know, if they've got junk that flew into the front, you can take some of that out to get to them. Um, but we see a lot of people that just, you know, go out there and they yank people out. Now that you've got this hurt person laying in the middle of the street, which is not a good place for them before emergency responders arrive. So, um, just thought I'd throw that out there that, you know, just, uh, the biggest, the best thing for people, if they've been in an accident, is just leave them sit in their car if you can. Uh, it's safe for them in case another car comes barreling through, which happens sometimes. You know, and there'll always be somebody out there that says, well, you know, my uncle's daughter's girlfriend's boyfriend, you know, one time was in a car and, and he got hit and, and killed. And, well, yeah, that happens. But, you know, my comment to those kind of people is like, okay, so a car came along and hit the car he's in and killed him, right? Yeah, okay. So how do you think he would have fared if he was standing outside that car? So that kind of puts an end to that, right? So um, just a little public service announcement um, to uh, to those of you that, that care to listen this far. So, uh, but guys, I'm going to... I'm gonna relight this and continue to smoke this because this is a this is a very nice blend. This reminds me of a blend that would be an after dinner blend. 
You know, you just had a nice big dinner or almost like a summertime dinner blend. Very nice. I think it gets it gets better as you go too, so. Alright guys, I'm gonna cut it off there. I hope you're all doing well. Till next time, you take care.